Hello everyone, I'm Archana from Edureka and I welcome you to this session on one of the most recently released Microsoft Azure role based exam, which is AZ 300. That's Microsoft Azure Architect Technologies exam. So before we get started, let me walk you through today's agenda first. We will begin by discussing the reasons behind transition from old to new certification exams. Then we'll talk about AZ 300 in particular. We'll discuss different prerequisites that you need to know before you go ahead and attempt the exam different skills that you should have to successfully complete the exam and finally how to prepare for this exam and we'll end the session by answering frequently answered questions regarding the transition. So I hope agenda was clear to you guys. Let's get started then. Well, it's a known fact that at Ignite 2018 Microsoft announced the launch of all new Azure role based certifications. But when asked about the reasons for this transition, Microsoft stated mainly two important ones. First one is that Azure certifications which are being retired were very broad in scope. So with increasing number of services which are being added to Azure portfolio, candidates need to know all the concepts which becomes practically impossible at some point. Secondly, Microsoft wanted these certifications more aligned towards professional job roles. So in simple terms, these new credentials mark the next stage in Microsoft's learning evolution of certification with the core focus of building skills and knowledge aligned to specific job roles earning a Microsoft certification has never been much more powerful. So guys, these new role based certifications are split into three levels of designation. First one being fundamental level. You require to pass one exam here and the next there is associate requiring you to pass two associate level exams and finally expert level. Depending on the credentials, you need to pass two expert level exams if you have no associate certification prerequisite. But if you do have an associate level certification, then you need to pass one expert level exam. In this session, we will be focusing on one of the expert level exam, which is Microsoft Certified Azure Solution Architect. Apart from this session, there are two other videos by Edureka on Microsoft Certified Azure Administrator and Microsoft Certified Azure Developer. So guys, before you get into this expert level, go ahead and take a look at those videos as well. So let's get started with AZ 300, which is Microsoft Azure Architect Technologies exam. So guys earlier we discussed that role based certifications are split into three levels which are fundamental associate and expert Microsoft certified Azure solution architect is a certification which is launched at expert level and it is mainly regarding the role of a cloud solution architect. So basically this Azure solution architect exam replaces 7535 which is architecting Microsoft Azure solution exam. So in order to achieve the certification, you will need to pass two following exams, which is AZ 300 and AZ 301. That's Microsoft Azure Architect Technologies exam and Microsoft Azure Architect Design exam. So with these exams walking towards expert level credential, you will learn advanced Azure skills. You will learn how to translate business requirements into secure, scalable and reliable solutions as well. You will also strengthen your skills across different concepts like compute network storage and security. But as for today's session, our main focus is on AZ 300, which is Microsoft Azure Architect Technologies. But one thing before we proceed, guys, I'm not going to tell the entire name, which is Microsoft Certified Azure Solution Architect Expert every time I use it. So I'm just going to say it as AZ 300 and I hope you understand it. So let's begin by discussing the prerequisites that you need to take this exam. First of all, you need to have some knowledge on Azure Administrator or Azure Developer Associate Level Certifications, but it's not a necessary prerequisite though. So as a suitable candidate, you should have advanced experience and knowledge across various aspects of IT operations such as networking, virtualization, identity, security, disaster recovery, data management, budgeting and governance. So you should be able to manage how decisions made in each of these areas affect overall solutions that you make to your organization. Secondly, you must be proficient in either Azure administration or Azure development or DevOps. And lastly, you should have expert level skills in at least one of the domains which we discussed earlier. That's Azure administration or Azure development or DevOps. Now moving on to the exam basics. Now talking about exam basics. These are same for almost all Microsoft Azure exams. Let's begin by discussing exam time. Exam time varies based on type of exam you take and for these job role exams. The total time is about 180 minutes though the exam is for 150 minutes. The rest is for prep before exam. How many questions will there be in an exam? Most Microsoft certification exams contain about 40 to 60 questions. However, the number can vary depending on type of exam that you're taking. Now talking about score, all technical exams are scaled such that the passing score is 700. Any score of 700 or greater is a pass 
and any score below 700 is a fail. Apart from English, Microsoft certification exams are also available in several other languages such as German, Spanish, Chinese, Japanese, and many others. And lastly, how much does exam cost? Expert and associate exams typically cost about 165 US dollars, but the price may vary depending on the currency values in specific countries and regions. Well, there are other things as well, but these are the most basic things that you must know before you go ahead and attempt any of these Microsoft certification exams. Now let's move on to exam topics or the concepts and skills which you should have before you go ahead and take this AZ exam. As we already discussed earlier, in order to become a Microsoft Certified Azure Solution Architect, you need to pass two levels of certifications, which are AZ300, that is Microsoft Azure Architect Technologies exam, and AZ301, which is Microsoft Azure Architect Design exam. But like you already know, you can't go ahead and take exam directly, right? There are certain concepts which you must know. For example, if you're taking AZ300, you should know all about how to deploy applications on Azure Cloud, about security and workloads, about how to configure infrastructure on Azure Cloud, how to make your data secure and all that. And as for AZ301, you should know more about security and how to perform deployment, migration and integration of different services on Azure Cloud and about infrastructure strategy that's used in Microsoft Azure Cloud. But we will be discussing mostly about AZ300. So talking about AZ300, which is Microsoft Azure Architect Technologies exam, it measures a candidate's ability to accomplish the certain technical tasks. Each of these tasks are associated with percentage. This percentage usually represents how important the concepts is when it comes to exam. So the higher the percentage, the more questions you are likely to see on that content area in exam. First, I'm going to list out the tasks which are related to AZ300. Then we'll dig a little deeper into each of these tasks. So to begin with, we have deploy and configure infrastructure. The importance is about 20 to 30 percent, which is max of all tasks, as you see. The next is implements workload and security. Then comes create and deploy apps. Moving on, then there is implement authentication and securing data. And finally, develop for the cloud. As you can see, we have three concepts which are fairly important, like you have deploy and configure infrastructure, then there is implement workload and security, and finally develop for the cloud. But the rest two, which is creating and deploying apps, implementing authentication and securing data are a little less important when compared to other topics or tasks. Now let's go ahead and dig a little deeper into each of these tasks and what they contain in particular. So let's begin by deploying and configuring infrastructure. As you can see, the importance is highest when compared to other tasks here. So basically, you need to know how to analyze resource utilization and consumption. You need to know how to configure settings on resources, create baseline for resources, create alerts, analyze alerts across different subscriptions, and analyze metrics and many other tasks. Secondly, you should know how to create and configure storage accounts. Apart from all this, you should also know how to create and configure a virtual machine for Windows and Linux operating system. And you should also know how to automate deployment of these virtual machines. Well, it's always a plus if you know how to implement and manage virtual networks in Azure Cloud, how to create connectivity between different virtual networks as well. And finally, you should know how to manage Azure Active Directory and implement and manage hybrid identities within AZ Cloud or Azure Cloud. All these concepts come under deployment and configuration of infrastructure. Now moving on to second most important, which is implementing workload and security. As in every cloud computing, you should know how to configure serverless computing, implement application load balancing, and how to manage Azure migration concepts as well. As you know, Azure is known for its hybrid solutions, so it's fairly necessary. You should know all the hybrid migration or hybrid cloud solutions which are available on Azure Cloud. You should also know how to integrate on-premise network with Azure Virtual Networks, how to create a custom role and configure access to Azure resources by assigning these roles to users. You should also know how to enable multi-factor authentication for Azure tenant and configure user accounts for this multi-factor authentication. And you should also have a fair knowledge about how to manage role-based access control. Moving on to the next task, which is creating and deploying apps. I don't think I have to explain anything here, right? It's almost basic. So basically, you should know how to create web applications using platform as a service, and you should know how to design and develop these apps and run them in containers. Moving on to next task, which is implementing authentication and securing data. Its importance is about 5 to 10%, which is same as the previous task that's creating and deploying apps. So basically, you should know how to implement authentication across Azure Cloud and implement secure data solutions as well. 
Now talking about the last task, which is develop for cloud. You should know how to configure an app or service to send email implement and monitor auto scaling concepts as well. So guys before you go ahead and take this AZ 300 exam, which is Microsoft Azure architect technologies exam. Make sure you have all these skills or tasks like you already said earlier. This AZ 300 comes under expert level exam. So it's fairly necessary that you should know all these tasks before you go ahead and take exam. And you should also have some knowledge on Azure administrator and Azure developer associate level certifications as well. So basically what I'm saying is that these are the major skills that this exam measures for in a suitable candidate. Now the biggest question is how do you prepare for this exam? Is there a specific method? Well, firstly, you need to have hands on experience with technology to successfully pass any Microsoft certification exam. And the best way to prepare for an exam is to practice the skills which are required to ace in the exam. And most of the time you can find the skills in exam detail page. So what you need to do is first you need to go ahead and review the entire skill list. Think about each topic. If you're very knowledgeable on a specific topic, highlight the topic and don't spend more time on that topic. Try concentrating on weak points. The best way to do this is to actually perform the task and see if you encounter any challenge. If you do practice until you no longer experience those challenges. Apart from all this, you might also want to ask others regarding how they perform those tasks and what were the challenges that they encountered when they performed the task. Read some official white papers offered by Microsoft up for online courses and of course take plenty of sample tests because only when you take sample tests will you know how much capable you are of giving an exam. So if you have taken a sample test and if you have not passed, make sure you concentrate or prioritize those concepts which you are weak at. Well, I'm sure you know all this because it's mostly same with any exam, not just Microsoft Azure certification exam, right? So this is all about AZ 300 exam guys, which is Microsoft Azure architect technologies exam or in simple AZ 300. So like I said earlier, these new credentials mark the next stage in Microsoft learnings evolution of certification. But currently there's a lot of confusion about courses that are going to be expired or retired. Let's take a look at most frequently asked questions by the candidates who are trying to take the exam. So the first most frequently asked question is what should I do if I'm currently preparing for one of the retiring exams? So if you're currently preparing for exams like 70 532 533 and 535, you must complete these exams by December 31st 2018. That's because these exams are going to be retired or expired by December 31st 2018. The second most frequently asked question is what should I do if I've already taken this retired exam? Is it a waste? No, not at all. If you have already written this retired exams and you want to build your skill level to that of job role based certifications, all you need to do is take transition exams instead. The transition exam covers the details between the current certification and what Microsoft expects the candidate to have when he's writing new certifications. So basically it acts as a bridge between old exams and new exams and this AZ 300 which is Microsoft Azure architect technologies exam also has one transition exam. It's called AZ302. Let me name the transition exam for you, which is Microsoft Azure Solutions Architect Certification Transition Exam. Or in simple terms, it's AZ302. So if you have already taken exam 7535 and now you want to improve your skill set, so all you have to do is take this transition exam, which is AZ302. You also have different kind of transition exams for AZ100 and AZ200 as well. And that is why I'm saying if you want to know more, please do go ahead and refer to other videos by Dureka regarding AZ100 and AZ200. So there you go guys. Now you know more about how to become Microsoft certified as your solution architect with the help of this new job role based certifications. So please make sure you refer to other videos by Dureka on AZ100 and AZ200 as well. This is the end of this session. I hope the session was informative and fun. So if you have any questions regarding these transitions, or new certifications or AZ 300 in particular. You can post them in the comment section below and we'll make sure to answer you in reasonable time. Thank you guys. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.